Hi, so uh, I'm back and uh, here to do video number two. I actually brought a little friend uh, along with me today. You might see him over here. Uh, this is uh, Cheech. He's uh, very tiny, literally, maybe, maybe it's size of my like can fit in my palm. I'd say that uh, he's actually not mine. He is my girlfriend's sister's foster dog. And uh, he's pretty cool, cool little guy. We actually have two other dogs. Or, well, I have one dog. We have a, a big pit bull, age 10. Uh, he's a great guy. Maybe I'll throw up a photo or something. And then we also have, uh, or we don't, my uh, girlfriend's sister uh, has a wolf, um, pretty much a wolf dog. And so they're hanging out outside right now. So we just got this little fella right here. And say hi. I wanted to uh, give an update um, as far as what's going on with me. So, so far, I'm 12 days in on taking estrogen, although I am taking a very low dose. I'm only taking one milligram. Um, I actually thought it was going to be a little bit more um, to start out, but that's what she decided to go with, and it's probably based on what I came in telling her because uh, I didn't share this last time, but I did take estrogen for six weeks when I was 23. I'm 28 now. And uh, I backed out. I got scared. In general, lots was happening with my body and I was doing it. Um, I did go through a doctor, but I wasn't sharing it with anyone. So I think she started me out really low uh, this time around so I could feel it out. But so far, so good. Um, I feel good. I haven't noticed too many changes since it's only one milligram a day. Uh, but I am noticing some softer skin so uh, as I mentioned I already can't grow a beard um, but I'm feeling softer skin on my face uh, my girlfriend says it as well she's like uh, she noticed it on my butt first but now you can feel it on my face and I feel like I can notice it even on my legs and other body parts so that's the first thing I'm feeling and then I would say emotional so I had maybe a little breakdown uh, <laughs> uh, last weekend there was some drinking involved but it was a uh, a late night and I just started crying really for no reason just and it kind of kept going <laughs> so uh, and I've noticed this some other times too where I can just feel my tear ducts kind of kicking in easily and pretty much for no reason so that's kind of where I'm at 12 days in um, you know I'll update you guys as we go with that uh, but I wanted to kind of go off on another topic right now and I'm a part of some XXY and Kleinfelter's uh, forums, some um, kind of blog formats where people can give feedback, ask questions, and I've learned a lot. Um, but one of the biggest things I really want to go into is being positive. I hear it all the time, all the time, and it's the number one thing that drives me nuts. Because whether you have XXY or you're born with something else, or if you were born 100% healthy with no uh, abnormalities or um, side effects to something, everyone has problems and you need to learn to stay positive. Uh, so let me kind of backtrack here in what I'm saying is when you're born with climb filters or if you just want to categorize yourself as XXY, uh, and you start doing a lot of research on it, whether you're a teenager and you find this information out, or you're a parent and you start seeking information out about your son as to what's going on in their lives and in their bodies, sometimes you find out too much information and that really can hinder you because now you start thinking that all these things are going to happen to my son or all these things are going to happen to me. And that's not true. Uh, so... When really looking at it, let me let me name off some characteristics that I see on the internet all the time, and I see people bringing it up all the time. And sometimes they're true, but it's not true for everyone. And you shouldn't think that just because this information is out there that this is always going to be true for you. Um, so I'm actually going to look over here to my other computer and uh, read off a little bit of the list. So um, we have uh, trouble with. Uh, development as far as speech, um, that we tend to be quieter, that we can be very anxious, that we're usually a follower, um, that we have lower IQ. That one right there, I mean, that really bothers me. It's just saying, hey, we're on average dumber than the average person. Um, and, and then in go into other things from uh, depression 
uh, to expect depression. Um, and to just think that this is always going to happen to us is very unfair, extremely unfair. Uh, I was speaking with a leader in the intersex movement. She also studies conjoined twins, uh, but she really looks at, hey, this is the information that's out there. Yes, there is positive information out there and there is more new information out there, but a lot of it just talks about the difficulties that we have. It doesn't tend to talk about the successes that XXY people can have and that how we should hold our head up and expect great things out of ourselves. I, for one, give you an idea, growing up, I didn't know that I had Kleinfelters until I was 25 years old. Now I'm 28, so I've only known about it for a while. And I would also be one to sometimes say, the more I learn about it, sometimes I think, hey, let's blame it on the Kleinfelters. Let's blame it on this. When maybe it's just something about me, something that I developed, something that I learned over time or got from someone else. So we shouldn't always go back and put things on this uh, syndrome that we were born with. So they say that uh, Kleinfelter people don't normally or aren't normally athletic. I was very athletic growing up. I played basketball, I played volleyball when I was a little kid, I played baseball, and I didn't just play it, I was very, very good at it. I won MVP in high school for basketball, MVP in high school for volleyball. Uh, we made some really good runs as a team. Um, so I've always been athletic, and to this day I play basketball. Um, I, well, as much as I can. Uh, I work a lot, but I, I play basketball and consider myself to be a very athletic person. So that right there wouldn't hold true to me. I never considered uh, myself to be a dumb person. I wouldn't say I'm the, the smartest person in the room. I'm a very hard worker, but I get things done. Uh, I graduated college. I got a double major in communication and uh, business out of college. Um, I've done uh, sales jobs, but that's what I studied. I studied digital media in college, and I had a dream internship at WGN Radio Chicago. I had a Cubs fan. Uh, and so then I went from there to Yelp, and then over to ZocDoc in New York City, moved back out to Phoenix, and uh, now I work for another digital company, and I've been very successful. I've been a top account executive everywhere that I've gone. Yet, if you go online and you read a lot about Kleinfelters, it tends to lead us to believe that these types of uh, attributes and these types of successes are difficult or uh, hard to come by. And there are other people out there who have XXY and see great success, and we got to keep in mind that a lot of people with XXY don't even know they have it. And sometimes when you start finding out too much information, we start to hinder ourselves too much. So I want to say you have to be positive, and everything you read doesn't always apply to you. And I understand that other people do go through difficulties, and I go through my own difficulties. I do struggle sometimes, um, especially as I've gotten older, and I see more of the XXY and the Kleinfelters really changing my body. Uh, so I understand that sometimes it's difficult to keep your head up, but do what you got to do if it's talking to some people, whether it's family or friends or seeing a counselor or, uh, you know, pushing yourself to learn more, to educate yourself more. Do what you got to do to don't hold yourself to a low standard. That's just unfair to yourself. Um, and it's unfair to us as an XXY population. We should really hold ourselves to higher standards to succeed. I hope that uh, we can continue to strive to be better uh, individually and collectively and um, I really do appreciate all the feedback I've gotten on my first video I think it's up to almost 500 views already uh, that's fantastic it hasn't even been two weeks and there's been a lot of feedback um, people emailing me privately people commenting on the page uh, people interacting on forums about it and I really love that not just for me but I think it's uh, great for others and it's a great learning curve for me as well so I want this to be a place where I can um, go over my experiences, where we can educate each other, where we can share, uh, where it can be open communication and we can grow and go to a better place. Uh, so as much as I share my story about taking HRT and going the other not so common route as far as taking estrogen over testosterone, 
um, and also my personal experiences, uh, I also want this to be a platform where uh, we can speak about some maybe more controversial topics. So uh, from here, I would just say whether it's you as an individual or you as a parent, and you have a son coming up and you know he has these symptoms, let him develop and let him become the person that he can be, not just what a doctor says um, he's probably going to be limited to or what you read on the internet. Let it happen. Let them develop into who, who they are um, and the greatness that could be ahead of them um, without trying to overprotect them and sometimes hinder them. You know, I'm going to try to do this uh, about once a week. I know it's a little bit over a week. Uh, I apologize on that. And I'm working again on getting the video quality much better. It's going to slowly get better and better. I'm trying to teach myself uh, some video editing on, uh, well, on the MacBook Pro. Uh, I'm not very good at that, as you can see. But uh, I really do appreciate all the feedback. And uh, we will leave it at that until next time. Take care. Oh, and Cheech, Cheech passed out on me. Cheech should say bye, too. Yeah.